when people say very subtly sly things and then say, I was only joking. When people try to get a reaction out of you or say, say or do something in front of others, say, say you're going to have a presentation or, or, and just before that presentation, they try to, they say something that you think, wait a minute, and you feel a little unnerved from it. So you, it, possibly they could be trying to unnerve you. They are. Some people, they have a spirit in them. Okay. It's a spirit that is trying to control you because they want to see if they can get a reaction out of you because they need to. Okay. It's a narcissistic spirit, but it, it's, it is a spirit because remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness. Okay. So I've said it before. We're dealing with spirits when we deal with people like this. And they're of a spiritual mind and a spirit. They suffer from a spiritual condition. So when they see that you, being a child of God, you want to produce a certain type of fruit. Okay, the fruits of the spirit. Helpfulness, being kind. And it's probably something that comes naturally to you anyways. Chosen ones are always people that would just go all in without even thinking. We have to learn as we go along. We learn as we go along. We've had that anointing on us since we were kids even if we didn't know it. But Satan, being a spiritual being, and his millions can see that anointing. So you will want to produce, you will want to please our Lord. It, it's something that all born-again believers want to do. We want to please our Lord. So we want to produce more of this fruit. And we're willing and we're, we're, we're able. And they're not. And that's the problem. Okay. This is not this is not easy. This is not easy. And we're not dwelling on these things. The Lord told us that we should be very mindful of the schemes of Satan. OK, of the of the of the way he attacks us. And when you when you are aware of something, it's not going to catch you out the way it has before. To your detriment, which is the problem, because when it's to your detriment, when you suffer spiritually, you become spiritually ineffective, even physically emotionally in every way we are spirit beings carried in this physical body so it does matter it's all tied in together this is the temple of the lord okay everybody's familiar with that your body is your temple we know the way the world take it we're not interested in that we know that i mean but the world is still right your body is a temple you should honor it you should be a good steward of it and when you're healthy when you've been looking after yourself it does affect your mindset you feel more positive. Listen, this is why Satan attacks every us from every side. He can't stand humanity. Humanity as a whole, born again in the Lord or not. He doesn't want anyone to be able to come to the Lord. He wants to render us ineffective. He wants to pump our bodies full of chemicals and disgusting things that do not edify, do not nourish us because he knows how tied in the mind and the soul, well, the mind being the soul, according to the word of God, and the spirit, which is to come alive in Christ. He knows how tied in these things are to the physical. And that's why he will lure us with all sorts of manner of things to destroy our temples, to ultimately kill us. But it's to destroy us and to steal our ability to hear and know the things of God and to ultimately kill us and defeat us. So taking it back to this narcissistic spirit that needs to get a reaction out of you, that needs to have you react and respond in a certain way. If you're trying to produce good fruit, in the eyes of the Lord, good fruit, okay? Whether you know the Lord or not, this is applicable, okay? Because this is a war on humanity. Because again, God does not want that spirit to come alive in Christ. This isn't an us against them thing, okay? When this is not us against them. This is about knowing the Lord, but there are those who are unable to hear the Lord for whatever reason. We there are things that we're not we don't know, okay? We don't know if we can we can glean certain information such as as in the time of Noah. We know that the 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 people were affected physically their DNA. Okay? If you can destroy man's physical ability to function, that is going to have an effect on his mindset, on the impulses in, in his, her body. OK, 
okay? When you're sick, when I don't know if you've ever had a really terrible headache, but when you're sick and ill, you just can't concentrate on it. Think about anything. You're, you're unable to. You're just trying to get make it through the pain. <laughs> so when you're trying to produce a good fruit, Satan will try to produce a counterproductive fruit to that because he is attacking the spirit of God within you or that goodness. Every good thing comes from God. OK, so he is trying to attack that and destroy. Even the image of that. Because we are made in the image of God. That's why he is, was kicked out of heaven in the first place. He just refused to bow down to us. He refused to to acknowledge God's beautiful creation. He was jealous. He was jealous and proud. So think about what I'm saying to you. The same spirit that says I was only joking. A very subtle it's done in a very subtle way so that if you speak up about it, you can be, what do you mean? You can be made to look as, as though you're crazy. As if you, you think about the things that are said. You always think everything's about you. What do you mean? I wasn't doing that. That's your thinking. You're saying that about me. Why would I do that? That's gaslighting. Because you know they would. And you've seen them do it before. And you've caught them out. But they will argue. They will argue as if there's not a wall here. As if you've not seen it before. They'll tell you that you're, you're imagining it. They try to produce a counterproductive fruit. Okay. They try to produce. It's not even a fruit. It's a product of your traumas, of your past behaviour, of, of things that had nothing, circumstances and events that had nothing to do with you, that shaped your reactions at that time. Satan can see that you're healing. He can see that you're addressing these things. He can see that you're starting to understand the root causes of behaviours that you don't sit well with you because you know it's not your character. And that's the problem. That's the problem. He has to pull you back into those behaviours, even if... Even if he knows that you know, he has to try and make those. And the person that does this knows as well. They know. But he has to try and make you feel like you failed. Like there's no point. I'm never, a leopard can't change his spots. I'm never going to not be able to address these things. Now, I used to, I'm going to talk about myself personally. I used to always feel like I have to defend myself. I used to always feel like that's not what I meant. I meant, I didn't mean B, I meant A. It was only when I learned and I would get very, very upset within myself at being misunderstood by people that are supposed to know me. And it was only when I learned and realised and it made me very withdrawn. But then I started to learn by the grace of God and realise that that was exactly what it was designed to make me do. It was designed to make me doubt myself, second guess myself. It was designed to make me feel like I'm not understood so that I would have a level of insecurity. So I wouldn't be as confident. So I wouldn't be as bright and happy and joyful, charismatic, energetic. It, it was designed to make me dim my light a little bit. Put me in my place. I want you, I ask you, I urge you, to really assess the people around you. Because Satan, knowing that you want to fulfil God's word, he knows that you want to do everything God said. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. He knows the type of person you are. He knows that you want what you want to do unto others is a beautiful thing. Because you are good to others. You are considerate of others. You are humble. You are humble. <laughs> you naturally have that in you. You're caring. You're warm. You're friendly. OK, not in a everybody like me way, in a genuine sincerity, giving of yourself way. And he wants to destroy that in you. He wants you to, he wants you to pull it back and say, I'm not being nice to anyone. This is why you can't be nice to anyone. This is why you can't smile with people. They take it. They take your kindness for weakness. But you can't let him destroy you. That's why I tell you, don't go tired of doing good. Don't grow tired of doing good. Don't let them change you. 
Your mindset is so important. This is why chosen ones tend to be reclusive. This is why we go into periods of isolation. It's to protect ourselves and it's to become familiar with ourselves and it's to, to process and assess the things that have gone on and to avoid these type of situations where we are, encounter these people, but you'll always encounter them. Because that's right, the saying, I don't look for trouble, trouble looks for me, is exactly right. But Satan, knowing that you want to do well by the Lord, he will have you focus on those areas of God's word so that you feel you're failing. If if you've if you've not if you feel like you've not forgiven someone, listen, forgiveness is not a feeling. Okay, you can just say to the Lord, and you will see that your words align. What you speak into existence, your feelings will start to align with your words. But He knows that you study on those, you concentrate on those scriptures. But let me let me just draw your attention to other scriptures, such as as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Guard your heart, for all you do flows from it. Be, be, be careful of the company that you keep. Because another person's character affects your own. Do you take it as much? Do you, do, do you really understand what those words are saying? Because Satan would have you bypass those words, Satan. Even Satan poses as an angel of light. When some people, some people will be kind to manipulate you. I've said this in a, a word recently. Some people, they will actually produce, they will sh demonstrate what they will show are, are kind acts, thoughtful things, but they will do it to manipulate you. We are living in a jungle, I tell you. The world is messed up. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. We are not like that. We strive to thwart and defeat that. Listen, don't let it make you spend your whole life in isolation. Having periods of isolation is good and is advisable. So that you can process things. So that you can know thyself. Get to understand your own character. But understand others as well. Because when somebody bites, when somebody wants you to bite, when somebody prods, and provokes and goads you to behave a certain way, really, is that person, I mean, regardless of who that person is, that person is not for you. That person is actually trying to bring out the worst in you. Do you do that? Would you do that to them? Do you do the same thing? All these questions need to be answered honestly. Because you don't need people like that. You don't, you don't need people like that in your life. A, man, a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Take note of these things. A prophet is never appreciated in their own hometown. In their own home town. Hold back a little bit. I've said this before. You don't need to let... Because we look at our loved ones, for example, as being... We just, we just, we just give of ourselves. We just speak freely. You have to learn that you can't. When you are walking in Christ, you can't, because as I've told you before, Satan and his minions will use anyone they can to attack you. They will use anyone they can, and they're going to find the weakest link. They're going to find the one that is easily manipulated, that does not have the spirit of God within them, or that has holes in their armour due to their disobedience to the Lord. And they're going to get in that way to get to you. So you need to be mindful all the time. And let me tell you, as a man thinks, so is he, is what it says in Proverbs. So that is why Satan is trying to destroy your mindset and destroy through your physical, through your environment, your circumstances. Because he does not want to see you succeed. So anyone that he is able to use, anyone that you believe doesn't want to see you succeed either, I would advise you to apply caution to how you interact with that person if it is someone that you do have to interact with and that's just how it is don't seek to have them change because it's just never going to happen and if it does wonderful but you can't wait around for that you have to change you have to change your behavior the way you move the way you 
perceive the situation to be. Let's say a prayer. Okay, we're going to say a prayer to the Lord. Dear Holy Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come before you, Lord, we ask that you give us the awareness of our circumstances, the people around us, the spirits that are at work in them, the spirit that is at work in, at work in us. Please help us to be on guard when we need to be and to know when we can relax. Help us to stay in your word all the time and to stay in step with you. Help us to be obedient to your word so that you may fight for us the way you desire to. Help us to still be loving and kind and warm and to never let our joy leave us because you said in you we find peace. So if we stay close to you, we will be able to ignore or fight these things or find that we are not so offended anymore. Because we will not be looking at it as a point of being offended anymore. We will look at it from the view perspective of it's you that counts. It's the only thing that matters is you and what you think. And we have nothing more to prove other than to you. And in doing so, we prove something to ourselves as well and then to others who will witness that. You, your word says resist the devil so that he may flee from you. Lord, we ask that you give us the strength to do that. Give us the mindset and the, the, the anointing to see things before they occur. A sort of gift of prophecy to know where to go, when to move, how. Let us hear the spirit to know when to be quiet, when to speak, when to stay home, when to go out, when to avoid and when to jump in. And Lord, above all else, we ask that you... Keep us close by your side and in your favour and able to do the work that you have started in us. And you said that it is you that will finish that good work that you start in us. And for that, we are truly thankful. In that, we can relax and take a, a deep breath, the breath of Yahweh. You are our breath. You are the spirit that edifies. And when we keep our mind and our eyes on you, we cannot fail. Thank you, Holy God, in sweet Jesus' holy name. We plead the blood of Jesus over our lives. We are so grateful for your word, Lord. Thank you so much. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. I love you.